Hello guys and welcome to your 37th Java tutorial in which we are going to be going over the much awaited static keyword. Now we have actually used the static keyword in pretty much every program we have ever created because we need it for the main method. Uh, yes, But we've kind of done it unconsciously in this tutorial. Uh, I hope to kind of uh, take that away to make that use of the static keyword at least uh, a bit more conscious. But before actually going over the specialized case of the static keyword with the main method, uh, let's just actually go uh, and just demonstrate the basic properties of the static keyword. Let's go ahead to the source folder, create a new class, and name it box. All right. So public class box. What do we want this box class to have? Well, let's just give it a nice and easy uh, public string name. Make make that a member variable, and also create a constructor for this box class that's going to take in its uh, parameters a string by the name of n and set our member variable name equal to whatever we passed in, that string n. Alright, uh, now that we've actually done that, let's actually go ahead and create uh, a method. It's going to be a public void print name. And what this print name method is actually going to do is it's just going to print out the member variable of our name. And a very nice and fancy format. Alright, uh, if we type it correctly though. Only if we type it correctly. Alright, All right. you guys know what I mean. Alright. Let's see, my name is a uh, plus the name variable. Yeah, bull. Alright, so now that we've actually done that, everything up to this point should be understood by yourself completely. Uh, as we can see here, uh, nothing here should be new. This is just our standard a layout for our box class. Now, right now is where we put the sugar down, or actually the new stuff of this uh, tutorial. And we're going to create a public static uh, integer number of boxes. Now, this number of boxes variable is going to store the number of boxes we have created up to this point. And how do we actually uh, update this variable accordingly? And by the way, we're going to initialize it to zero. Well, every time we create a box or call a constructor of our box, uh, we're just going to take the number of boxes variable and increase it by one with a simple plus plus. There we go. All right. Now for the main uh, meat of this tutorial, what is the actual difference between a uh, public string name and or a public variable with that's not static and a public variable that is static? Well, in in accordance to this actual class, when we create a new instance of the box class, say you know like box one, box two, all the uh, public variables or public methods for that matter gets copied over to each uh, respective instance of the box class. If we have, say, a static variable or a static method once again, uh, those do not get copied over and remain in the original base class, the box class. And whenever we want to access them, say we want to access this number of boxes uh, static integer for, uh, from an instance of the box class, we're gonna actually going to have to I uh, have to use this box class as a through point, so we're going to have to access them through this box class. Now, even though that might not actually make much sense up to this point, uh, just uh, just take my word for it for now, and you'll see it in action uh, just in a few minutes. All right, and uh, for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to create a public uh, static method, uh, and let's just name it print number of boxes. And all it's going to do once again is uh, as as with the print name method, it's going to print out the uh, total number of boxes, total number of boxes, and it's going to give it an, an elegant like message, like so. <laughs> All right, and spell it hopefully correctly. Number of boxes there. All right. So now that we've actually uh, gotten this entire box class defined, and once again, this is a static method, so it's not copied over. Uh, to each instance of the box class is just uh, kept directly in the box class. Yes, I'm just clearing that up. And let's go to the main class now that we have uh, the box class defined and create some box instances. Let's create a box b1 and set it equal to a new box with the name of box. There we go. And let's set uh, the uh, box of instance of b2 to uh, box. Change one letter. And of course, the box instance of b3. That's right, you guessed it, or maybe not, a uh, bus. Yes, I kind of broke the consistency there. All right. Nonetheless, uh, now that we have those three instances defined, let's go ahead and use the same method for each of them. Let's use b1.printName and uh, copy and paste because I'm lazy. Uh, b2.printName and b3.printName. Let's go ahead and run the program and see what we get. 
we should get some very nice messages. My name is Box. My name is Boss. My name is Boss. All right, right there. Very nice and significantly different. Notice that. That is because each of these instances, B1, B2, and B3, got its own instance of the name variable, right? That that's that's one of the main key points and uh, differences between the static static and uh, regular members, because this uh, string name instance was copied over separately to b1, b2, and b3, which is how we could get different output for the names here of the three instances. However, if we uh, went ahead and called b1.print number of boxes, and we called b2.print number of boxes, and I'm actually not copying and pasting, I'm so proud of myself, print number of boxes right there, but I'm using Eclipse, which is an awesome tool, so. Uh, if we called these, so this uh, these methods from each one of the instances, we would actually get the same output. And if you might, you might actually guess that it is in fact three total number of boxes three, three, three. And that is because the static uh, integer number of boxes is increased uh, in ev each of the constructors. So each time we call the box constructor, it's increased by one uh, to two and then to three finally. And it starts out to zero, of course. Yes, and we actually access it. Accessing it from the instance of the class, of the box class, isn't actually correct. And we're even getting this little warning here. Because what the, all this does is it says, all right, so I need, I need the print number of boxes method, which is a static method, which uses the static uh, integer number of boxes. I'm going to access that through the box class. And it just goes to box and it accesses it that way. But instead of actually uh, using the instance, we can also just put the name of the base class, box, directly. And uh, that is once again because uh, these static integers or member variables and static uh, methods they stay in the box class. They're not copied over, and this can actually have a lot, uh, a large amount of advantages uh, in programming that we'll we'll come across uh, very soon. And uh, accessing it directly without having to create an instance of uh, the box class, as we had to to actually use the print name method and you know the name variable. That actually has a lot of advantages. We can just go right ahead and use a static uh, variable or method. I think that's that's quite cool, quite cool. And also notice that yes, we were when when we create an instance of the box class here and we call print number of boxes, it's printing out the number of boxes that belongs to the box class. So this once again doesn't get copied, and each of the individual instances here, when we're calling the print number of boxes on them, uh, method of them we're actually just printing out the variable that belongs to the box class. It doesn't get copied over and it doesn't get increased individually for each instance. It gets increased collectively as a whole from the box class uh, from this variable and you might actually see them called shared shared variables so this in static integer number of boxes is kind of shared because each of the each of the variables access it through the box class so it's, it's kind of it's, it's, it's kind of shared but Really, it just belongs to the base class of box. That's that's what I wanted to clear up. Yes, and now that I have actually said that, I think I have actually completed this tutorial on a, a static modifier. So uh, yes, thank you guys very much for watching. And actually, before going away, I want to clear up one final thing. The act that act doesn't actually uh, tell us why our main method is static. And I just want to you guys to have a f complete picture of why our main method is static. Even though what I've said kind of alludes to it, it still doesn't kind of answer that directly. So why is our main method static? Well, let's see if our main method was not static. What would we have to do then? Then the JVM, or the Java Virtual Machine, which is kind of like the compiler, each time it wanted to call the main method, it would first have to create an instance of the main class and then call main class dot, the instance of the main class dot main. That's what it would have to do to call the main method. And if if it was static, if uh, it was public static void main, it would just it could just use called main class dot main directly without creating an instance of the main class, thus creating multiple multiple. Uh, if we can create multiple instances of our main class, it could create a lot of confusion and a lot of you know uh, mumbo jumbo that we don't want to go down. Uh, and as I, I've mentioned earlier here, here with for instance for our box print number of boxes command, we can just access it directly because it's a static method. And uh, same kind of applies to our main class uh, dot main, S main class uh, with the static void main method. Yes. So yes, these two examples kind of do relate, and we can we can call a static method without having having to create an instance 
of the actual class, which is once again a large benefit of static uh, methods. Uh, anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you got something out of the tutorial and pre-praise.